down the western seaboard to a uh, suburb of the Los Angeles uh, area for our speaker this evening. And it's great to welcome uh, John Lochner to the microphone and to share in his wonderful message. Uh, John, welcome. Uh, let's pray over your message this evening. Heavenly Father, we just pray for your words to come from the mouth of this man, that his uh, focus is on you, that his focus is on teaching others about you and sharing you with everyone who is listening. We pray that they are blessed by your message through John tonight. Uh, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, John. Uh, look, yeah. We're just looking forward so much to your message and uh, I can't wait to hear it. All right. I'm going to actually read uh, out of Colossians. It's been a long week for me at work. It's been a long for me at home. Like uh, two of my kids are sick and a lot of stuff at home, a lot of deadlines. And so it's nice to come and, you know, just be with other believers and hear them worshiping Jesus. A lot of the songs are great. I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the kingdom of God. Be Thou My Vision is, um, is a very special song to me as well. Um, I think during a time when when I, I was going uh, to a church that made me overemphasized um, certain things, having Jesus be our vision. And I'm going to read it at Colossians. And Colossians is a book that definitely <laughs> lifts up Jesus. And, and the verses I'm going to read from is uh, Colossians 1, starting with verse 11. And ending with verse 20. Yeah, 20. That's correct. So I'll, I'll start off. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. For all endurance and patience with joy. Give me thanks to the father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that it would land on the good soil, that it would take fruit, that it would give life. That Father, if anybody's listening now that doesn't know you, that they would come to know you through your word. For your word is life. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing by your word. And so we thank you for it. So I'll start out this morning. Uh, we were actually going through Colossians and a couple of Psalms. And the part that stuck out the most was this piece here. And the translation that I read was a little bit different, but it holds the same meaning. It says, I'll start with 11 again. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and peace and joy. Give me thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13 is really the key verse. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved. And so I'll stop there. So a couple of things here. 
Uh, the Colossian church, I, I think uh, it starts with him being really thankful. They're seeing the fruits of the spirit. God's doing something within the church. Paul says, I think you always remembering you, uh, 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 you know, uh, we pray for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus for the love that is for all, for, for all the saints, because the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up in heaven. So, so there's something happening, some kind of revival, something's happening in Colossians. And so as he's talking about that thankfulness, he's reminding them and he's reminding us what God is saving us from, but really important, what he is saving us to. Because a lot of times I feel like when we listen to the gospel, when we hear the gospel, we hear about God saving us. But God doesn't just come and save us from something, which he does. 100% he's saving us from, from God's wrath, from the punishment of sin. He's saving us from our sinfulness. Uh, so he's saving us from those things. But he's saving us for something. Uh, he's not just saving us, but he is bringing us to something. And the verse here that I highlighted in verse 13 is he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And we have redemption. So he's, he's saving us from to something. So he's bringing us to something. And what is this something? He's bringing us unto a kingdom. I'll give you a story. And I think this, this story kind of, uh, kind of shows, I think maybe, um, how we view our Christianity. And it starts out like this. There was three men. They were all building a building. They had the exact same job. And they would just lay brick upon brick upon brick. The first man, when you saw him, he didn't seem happy. As in fact, he seemed really bitter at the, at the task that he was doing. So a man decided, let me go find out what, why, why this man is bitter and sad. So he asked the first man, what are you doing? And the first man says, Oh, I'm just laying brick over brick, just laying brick over brick. It's monotonous work. I hate it, but I'm laying brick over brick. And he goes to the second man, and the same thing, the second man, he's not as bitter and angry, but you can tell he doesn't like the, the task at hand. You know, he's kind of grumbling a little, bit, just like the other man, not as much, but a little bit less. What are you doing, sir? The man says, oh, I'm just building this wall, brick over brick, brick over brick. And then he looks to the right and he sees a man who is happy. He's smiling. He's singing. He's doing the same thing as those other men. And he tells the man, sir, uh, why are you so happy? You're doing such monotonous, mundane work, repetitive work. What's going on? What, what, what is it with, with what you're doing? And the man smiles at the man. He says, I'm making a beautiful castle, a beautiful palace a kingdom for my king. And so that story blessed me. And I read it. It was in a storyteller's book. Uh, I, I, I didn't make it up and I, I can't get this specific reference. It was a storyteller's book. I'm in marketing. I do marketing for the Union Rescue Mission in Los Angeles. They do amazing work, uh, work of God uses them for transformation, uh, bringing people from the streets, helping them recover, taking care of people, body, soul, and spirit so that they can get out of it. And so here in the story, when we're talking about God saving you from something to something, it's really important because when, when, you know, just, just think of your life. Okay. Say that, uh, you know, you're sitting at home and all of a sudden you're invaded by a bunch of raiders. They're going to come and kill you. They're going to kill everybody in the street. And then someone shows up, they come in and they save all you guys. Right. And well, what was I doing before? And they realize, Hey, there's a war happening. <laughs> you're alive get ready, be prepared. It's going to happen again. Uh, you can be part of this kingdom that's pushing back the forces of darkness. And out of the people in the street, some people are there as wow, like, this is amazing. Like you guys came here, you, you did something Let you know, like, I, I want to know more about it, but some people just continued on. I'm just going to keep living. I'm just going to do my thing. I'm going to do whatever. Right. And, and so in that scenario, if, if, if we were actually being invaded and unfortunately we're seeing that throughout the world, we're seeing countries being invaded, you know, whether you agree or not, uh, just imagine we, we, we've never in America, we're a big anomaly. We've never been, there has never been 
th- this this much state of peace, this much state, and again, it, it's 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 clouded because there's a lot of stuff happening. But in the work that we do at the rescue mission, we see, unfortunately, uh, where they hide the stuff that people don't want to see, and where they hide things that uh, uh, people in the government and different entities that that are in power do a lot of things to exasperate the problem. But here, we see in scripture saying it says in verse thirteen. He has delivered us from where has he delivered us from? And I think this is the confusion in people's mind. He delivered us from the domain of darkness. We were all prior to Jesus coming to us and changing our hearts, changing our minds. The Bible says I was in a kingdom of darkness. And it also says that I was an enemy of God. And that's difficult for some people, especially in a very image centric, self centric society we somehow equate the reality of those words as if an attack on myself or on who I am and a being. And it's not, it actually is part of salvation. If you hear it correctly, if you see it correctly. So we're being delivered from the kingdom of darkness, verse 13. And what, what, what is happening here to share in the uh, verse, uh, the verse right before that, to share in the inheritance of the saints in light He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And again, unfortunately, these ideas are foreign to us. We don't live under a kingdom. We don't have a king. We live in a um, we live in a, a democratic slash a democratic republic if you will right we we have people that represent us unfortunately our government is kind of strange because it's a popularity contest instead of voting in the best people we're voting the people that are most popular if you read the old testament <laughs> that, that didn't go very well for israel and they kept doing it we have functional souls we have functional even within the churches we have a lot of uh, celebrity ministers and again if you read your old testament there's warnings and saying you know uh, uh i i thought about this line today right such and such big mega church pastor you know he's about to he's about to pass away or he's going to retire and says oh no what are we going to do now i guess we're just going to have to trust jesus right and and i know that sounds absurd that sounds absurd wait what what i mean What do you mean? That's a, that's a, that's a, you know, it's like, but that's that, but see in our very heart of hearts, we want another King. We want our functional souls. We want someone else. And in, in the text that I'm reading here today, he's saying you're being transferred from a kingdom that in its natural state, wants great speakers, charismatic, you know, just charismatic people that get up and communicate. They want, I think we are looking, we are created to worship, but we worship the wrong things. We listen to the wrong things. And so, so we're looking for functional souls. And as you read scripture, the more I read the Old Testament and the New Testament, I see constantly, I have, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, in certain ways, I don't want to lead because it means I'm be held accountable. I want someone else to take that responsibility. That's a heavy burden. That's a heavy responsibility. You know, I, I work, I have the, the privilege of working with Andy Bales. There's a lot of things that are carried on the shoulders of men that have to live, that, that live unto God unashamedly, right? A lot of pressure, a lot of things, especially when you're standing up for Jesus, when you're trying to keep Jesus at the forefront of a company, where you're surrounded by people that are trying to take Jesus out. That's a lot of weight to carry. And that most people are like, I don't want it. I don't want that. I don't want that kind of responsibility. Uh, you know, I don't want to be battling, uh, you know, people that are uh, anti-Christ and so forth and so on. And so there's a lot of things that come along with that leadership. So I'm not, I'm not saying that you can't be a godly leader. But what I'm saying is that our desire, our, our heart is to have a functional soul. But here, the Bible remembers that you're being transferred for a kingdom where you want a soul. You want a king over you. You want others to solve it. And he's saying, no, I'm transferring you to a new kingdom, the kingdom of his son, where he is ruler, where he is preeminent, where he is king. And when he speaks, I listen. And when he commands me to do something, I do it. That's foreign to us. That's different to us. 
we're, you know, we, we live in a very individualistic society and there was a lot of good in being individualistic. But the Bible isn't just about individualism. It's also about the body of Christ. It's individual and corporate. It's not, and some people will do the opposite. They'll overdo the, the no, be thou my vision where they overemphasize the church as non-individuals and forget the individual. So no, that's the Bible says, you are still you, but you are still part of the church. So it's, it's, it's a, there's, a, there's a, a type of duality in that. But again, going back to the text, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom, in Jesus, we have redemption for forgiveness of sin. And talk, now let's go to the, let's go to the, compare Jesus to your favorite minister, pastor. It doesn't even come close. Listen to these words. He is the one that's supposed to be loved, right? Here's Jesus in comparison to whoever you listen to. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, all things were created. And, and it reminds me of, if you read a, uh, if you read a story of uh, Job, <laughs> Right, who 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 did, uh, you know, got, got a lot of beef because the devil was tempting him. The devil wanted to show God that this guy doesn't really love you. And in the end, what does God say? Who made everything? Who created everything? And that's when Joe realizes, oops, yeah, that's like an ant, right, trying to explain to a human how to uh, build a rocket ship that goes to Mars, right? I mean, it's just it's not a comparison. So he realizes, oh yeah creator jesus is the creator that's kind of a big deal let's keep going for anybody all things were created in heaven and on earth oh he created the angels he created the heaven of heavens the universes and just in case you have confusion it says he created things visible and invisible where the thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities all things were created through him. Now that speaks of his complete and absolute and utter sovereignty. And he is before all things. And in him, not only did he create everything, everything is held together by him. All things are held together by him. And he is what? The head of the body, the church. He is our king. We were transferred from a kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the son of his love. And now as the people of God, we submit ourselves to the head of the body of the church being Christ. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that everything and everything he may be preeminent for in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And so those are the markers. That's the distinction of the people of God. We were transferred from darkness, from a, a, a man-centered, self-centered, me-centered way of living to a self-denying self-dying and it doesn't end there though that's the first part of the story because a lot of times when we when we talk about death <laughs> we don't talk about how he makes us alive and that that transfer you, you you die so you can live you don't just die to stay dead sometimes i feel like christians die and then they're just miserable their whole life that's not again he's saving you from something and bringing you to something. And with that in mind, when we look at Jesus' words, he says, by the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He was looking forward. And as Christians, it, it, we shouldn't love the world. <laughs> we should not love the world. And as Christians, as we're looking at how God is building his church, using us in the process, uh, it, it's 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 a new like when it says we're a new creation in Christ, we're created for a purpose. We're created for meaning. We're created for a cause. We're created to be light and darkness, salt. And, you know, we're created to be 
a city on a hill. And when, and when that happens, when we are taking care of the widows and the orphans, when we're ministering to the poor, when we're taking care of the needy, <laughs> we're taking care of their physical needs, we're taking care of their soul, their, their, their mental needs, and we're taking care of the spiritual needs, the world just gets angry. They have nothing to say against us. And so as we look at the word of God, my, my, my admonition, my reminder is, yes, Jesus saves you. He saves you fully. He, I don't believe you can lose. It says, he who began a good work in you will complete it to the very end. I hang on to that promise, meaning if you started something, God does not start something without finishing it. He does that. And if you, if you believe that, you have to understand that he didn't just save me so I can hang out on my porch and, you know, uh, I don't know what people do in porches. <laughs> you know, he didn't hang out. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't save me so I can retire in Maui for the rest of my life where I can save up my money and just go and rest. That's not why God saved me. That's not why God saved us. He saved us from darkness, from the enemies of God, from being selfish, from being self-centered to something. He's bringing us to the kingdom of his son. And all you have to do, all you have to do is look at Jesus, look at his beauty, look at his majesty, look at his power, and you know, even non-Christians, they say, I have a lot of bad things to say about those Christians, but this Jesus, man, I can't say anything bad about him. I mean, he kind of did a lot of good things. So as we begin to reflect him, the world <laughs> was not going to like us. And like they crucified Jesus, maybe they're going to crucify as well, but that's not, but, 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 like Jesus, we need to look forward and say, for the joy set before us, we will endure persecution, we will endure hardships, and our happiness, and our joy, and our life comes from a relationship with Jesus. So right now, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, <laughs> I'm encouraging you. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Maybe as I was sharing some of these words it ministered to you, it spoke to you. Maybe you're down because life is difficult financially. There's a lot of bad stuff happening. I think 70% of America is living paycheck to paycheck. So we know there's issues. There are things that drag us down. But today is the day of salvation. If you will give your life to Christ, if you commit your life to him, he is more than able to save you. And if he saves you today, if he saves you tonight, he's not just saving you from you know, from your sin, your sinful, the things that are going to, that are destroying this earth. I, like every morning, every morning I drive to work in downtown LA and I see what sin does to people, how it destroys people. And, and again, you know, a lot of it is because uh, uh, there's deception. People, you, people are deceptive out there. They tell them, I'm giving you something wonderful and it becomes a death to a lot of people. But the encouragement is even amidst that darkness, I can tell you story after story. And if you have YouTube, you can go to stories from Skidder on YouTube and you can see monthly we post a story of transformation that God is still working in the darkest places in the darkest corner of the world. His light shine and his power is real and it transforms life and makes people new. So my encouragement to you is come to Jesus, repent from your sins, submit to him, and he will give you life. And so that's my, my, my message to you, my encouragement to you. Again, it, for believers, God saved us for something. We're on a mission to do amazing things, wonderful things. And as you, as you trust him, rely on him, and you let him lead you, you're going to see God do, God do amazing things through you and through those that are committed and submitted to him. So again, thank you so much for letting me share this, this short little message. But again, I encourage you just read the word of God. It's going to help you grow. It's going to help you uh, uh, draw closer to Jesus and hopefully draw closer to other people in the body of Christ. You cannot be a loner Christian. It says the Bible says, like the songs we sang today, people will know us by the love we have for each other, for one another. And so that's how people are going to know you. And so that is also true. Again, Christianity is individual but it is also corporate. It's not one or the other, it's both. And it's vertical. <laughs> it is submission to King Jesus. He is Lord, he is King of the church, he is King of the world. Thank you so much.
Wonderful message. Thank you, John. Uh, I, I look, I am in awe of anybody that works with uh, children or the underprivileged. And uh, look, you have just given us a message to uh, share uh, with others uh, far and wide. Thank you so much. May we pray for you? Yeah. <laughs> great. Yeah, and, and pray for pray for us. It's been a it's been a difficult it's been a, a difficult financial year. I think during COVID it was amazing because people were giving more. After COVID, it's not happening, and so and, and and what's happening too is the need is higher. We have a lot more families than ever coming to to the shelter, so it's become so. Just just pray for God's provision. We're doing a couple of uh, a couple. We're going to TV special uh, with uh, Joel McHale is going to be hosting it on CBS. Check out urm.org. We're doing a lot of things. Uh, uh, events. There's going to be a, a a run run a walk run walk that people can participate in, and even over the edge that people like to repel over 25 story buildings. But in doing these fun things, they're also helping raise money to help your neighbor in LA. So, yeah, de- yeah, pray for let's, us. We need and the more the merrier. Definitely need prayer. Let's pray for John and his work. Uh, Heavenly Father, you have called us to look after those that are not as well off as we are. Look after the poor and the underprivileged. And this man is doing your work in his area and even wider. We just pray for your blessing over him, blessing over his family. We pray for provision for him, for his family, that he can feed them as well as he needs to. And also, Lord, we pray for his work. Uh, Work with the underprivileged, work with the poor, work with the needy in uh, his uh, connection with union rescue mission we pray that uh, you would bless the uh, work that he does and the people that he comes in contact with uh, that they not only know that uh, they have uh, someone who loves them and someone who cares for them and someone who supplies uh, their needs but uh, that there are people working around to uh, share all of those things with them as well lord we just pray for your increased blessings and increased uh, um, uh, provision for john and his family but especially to his work uh, his work in providing for those that uh, that you call your own in jesus name we pray amen, amen. thank you so much again amen. john what's the best way that people can uh, connect with you and help you out uh, have you got some um, um, social media or on, websites or something to. where we can connect with you yeah I mean I, I mean you know uh, if you want to connect I mean you can, <laughs> it, I, I work for the Union Rescue Mission URM, URM.org and then, you know those social profiles and if anybody wants to email me it's just the first initial of my name J Lockmer at URM.org and again, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things we have to. We just opened up a new building that has over 300 beds or 86 families in LA, and so definitely looking for people to come and you know do Bible studies, minister, sing, pray. You know, and we, we like I said, we have over I think last last is over four, over 500 kids I think now throughout our three buildings in LA. So it's it's getting bigger, and so that requires a different kind of care. Uh, obviously, we're against. Uh, um, harm reduction which is we don't allow the free flow of drugs in our buildings and that is that's a no-no unfortunately and and most buildings and the reason why so many people are very anti-homeless is because most of the government buildings or that get government funds allow for the free flow of drugs and we refuse to have that in a large part is because we're the largest rescue mission that's taken in whole families and we don't want kids around that we don't want families around that and as a result we get zero government funds or financial aid at all and, and and also because we're Christian, that really it's because we're Christian. You know, we don't want them to 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 control uh, what we share with people. Thank you so much for sharing, John. It's uh, it's very easy for us to be a little insular in our nice, comfortable homes with plenty of food, but uh, the work that John does with Mission is just amazing. And uh, I reiterate, I am in awe of people who are called and answer the call to uh, do that work. It's been absolutely